Well, hello everybody, and welcome to another uh, Spy Party Winter Cup cast here in 2024. We are in the semifinals, and I'm very excited uh, to be joined by Guggy and Hornet. Hello, everyone. Hello, it's me. <laughs> Our favorite goblin. Hornet. And so, <laughs> so uh, um, first game up will be Nebula versus C Rams, and we can review our bracket here. Uh, so, gentlemen, can you talk about the uh, the journey our players uh, made to get here with Nebula and C Rams? Yeah, very interesting stories um, for both of these players. So, we'll start with uh, start with Nebula, who's had. Um, maybe a little bit more of an ordinary run. Like, I, w I actually want to say he's probably had the hardest run to the semifinals for anyone in this tournament. Like, right off the bat, he gets Pofki, like, really strong Grandmaster player and really hard stylistic matchup for him. Um, I think that was a very close matchup. And rewarded for his efforts, he gets Lev in the next round, who is, you know, probably an equally scary opponent. And uh, But yeah, Nebula actually won that one quite comfortably. And uh, that kind of brings us to the other side of the bracket with C Rams and Cotty. I think C Rams and Cotty might have set a record for longest overtime ever. I, I can't even tell you how many overtime rounds they did. But extremely close match. Ultimately, C Rams did come out on top um, and then had a very similar matchup against Wrestler, once again going into overtime and, yeah, just taking it down, just winning, you know, in that balcony overtime. So, um, yeah, very interesting matches. Um, you know, C-Rams might be a little exhausted after all those extra rounds, but also kind of shows that, uh, you know, he has nerves of steel. And yeah, Nebula just been playing strong opponents one after another. So yeah, Guggy, how are you um, feeling about these players and their runs? Uh, for Nebula, Nebula definitely, without a doubt, I think is the favorite in both their previous matches. But that's definitely... They've definitely had the hardest climb I've seen in a while. And C-Rams... I think debatably is the easiest of the three people they're facing, but that isn't taking anything away from Serums in the slightest. Um, yeah, yeah, Serums is kind of an interesting case where, um, you know, you have these games where he looks good, and then sometimes in these cups he just, you know, he's like at a superhuman level. I remember the last one, I don't know if it was the last winter or summer cup, but he came down to the wire against, you know, many... Um, you know, so he shows like he can really rise to that level. Like sometimes he just snipes, lights out, and um, yeah, it just makes him a really scary opponent for Nebula. However, I will agree. Um, you know, Nebula is the favorite here. Nebula is usually the favorite for <laughs> most tournaments that he enters. So um, yeah, I think if I had to pick one of the two, it, it's hard not to ever pick Nebula. But I, I do expect this to be a close one. Yeah, I will also point out C Rams in total had uh, nine. Uh, tie breaks against Cotty had to reschedule did a whole other match played three more tie breaks before winning and then against Wrestler had one more tie break meaning 13 total tie breaks uh, unless I am miscounting CRMs plus basically three matches so I'm pretty sure CRMs has played more than any other person ever potentially even uh, with like three rounds before you get to this point, because he's played three matches basically. So, Serums is probably tired. Is my point. <laughs> yeah, definitely an, an insane statistic, and I don't think we've ever seen anything like it. <laughs> that being said, I'm sure Serums uh, still done his homework and uh, is ready to show us something here. So, with that, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the draft. Right. Um, Nebula has picked, of course, Ice Cubism, which is uh, my personal favorite of the four, um, with a bunch of good ones. And Serums has picked uh, ABC, which is my personal least favorite of the four. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, this is um kind of an interesting setup here. So let's see. Okay, so the balcony ban, mm -hmm. that's kind of expected. Um. Tayen. So it looks like Tayen is a double for uh, Nebula. Um, yeah, Tayen and Corey also... are 
understand. So is there? Yeah. A, I don't know where the mistake here is. But... Yeah, I was a little. I was a little surprised by that. Um, I don't know if there's an extra Tayan floating around somewhere. Yeah, that we've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It so should Tayan be is... Martini bands. Oh, sorry. Uh, it should be. I was looking at the wrong match. Um. Uh. Theorem's band gallery. There you go. Okay, so that, that makes a little more sense. Um, gallery. Oh, whoops. Yeah, gallery is kind of a scary venue to pl play someone like Nebula on. I, I can see that being a ban. And yeah, these doubles are really interesting to me. Like a uh, courtyard double. Oh, courtyard three of seven double. That actually makes it even more interesting. So I, I can kind of see that being um, kind of a solid pick if, if you're the underdog. Because in three of seven courtyard. Um, it's just kind of hard. It, it's kind of it's it's hard not to sieve shoot when you know like the AIs are just going to statues. You can contact for them. Um, like I feel like that's a little bit more of a toss up. Uh, Tayan, on the other hand, I uh, I feel like that one just you know kind of comes down to your bug knowledge. Like you you know knowing how to get bugs and how how to spot them. Like that's I feel like that can be like a big deciding factor on Tayan. So yeah, that double doesn't surprise me too much either. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see gallery, not what. Uh, yeah, I'm fixing it. Sorry, um, I'm pretty excited to see yeah, yeah. if um, C Rams has something really special planned here. I think C Rams might be a player who's especially famous for spending a lot of time like researching their opponent and coming up with very interesting spy plays and cheese. And so I wonder if the double on the uh, any three of courtyard um, is you know, showing of some special tech planned. Yeah, I think when I when you know when you're when you're watching C Rams in these games, these important matches like this one, um, he will always come into these games very well prepared, both sniper and on the spy side. So yeah, I I don't know what kind of special tech you could do on Courtyard, but I'm sure he has something up his sleeve. Um and with that, uh, let's uh, go ahead and get into the first round. Well, I hope so. We got to do that at some point. All right. So, uh, kicking things off, looks like we're on Aquarium, and it looks like C Rams will be spying first as Taft in three, two, one, playing it. Taft, of course, is uh, the fastest character, as we all know. But uh, I share a lot of people also know that Taft matches more or less the color of the back of Aquarium, which means they can do some interesting time at things. Nebula, of course, knows this, but um, still always a good option and with that. Yeah, and given, um, you know, CRAM's love of preparation, I, I'm sure there's something with a shark going that's, that's probably planned or going to happen at some point, maybe taking advantage of, of Taft's speed. Um, so far, yeah, we pulled a book out. Uh, we're getting a little bit of flirt progress. Um, it looks like we do hit a green for 35%. And, um, yeah, just uh, still just kind of waiting for the party to settle. Got a few bar goers. We missed a chance at a print. And uh, not too much else going on at the moment. I think maybe just going to wait around for another flirt. Possibly even a contact. Yeah, not the best contact I've seen ever, but obviously we still have a lot of time to do that. Uh, yep, just I'm I'm assuming this book is not going to be going back into green, but uh, and the red. Whether it's a cheese or if it's uh, well, that's a contact. Uh, whether it's a cheese or whether it's just a see if everybody forgets where the book is. Uh, that's yet to be believed. Yeah, we take this contact. It it. It ends up not being terrible because the SDA was in the other full conversation. Of course, we don't know that, but um, I think C Rams might have suspected it. Uh, interesting low light strategy here from Nebula. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think he low lit everybody who wasn't in with an SDA and uh, actually takes a shot for a proper book return. Uh, I can only um... assume. I can only assume this is a little bit of a pathing slash etiquette break because nothing else can really explain this shot to me. That was an animation break on the book return, um, which is considering that's mostly behind the shark is means that he was being closely watched anyway. So yeah, yeah that is an that is a wild catch. I'm 
very impressed. Yeah, that's a bit of a statement shot. And uh, yeah, the, the party was so narrowed down by that point. I think you can just kind of like hyper focus on certain people. Um, so yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see what Nebula can do here on the spy side now. Uh, spying as plane twin in three, two, one, plane it. That is not plane twin. That is Alice. Uh, that is the SDA. True. I don't know why I was zoomed in on the play twin, but uh, thank you for that correction. Yeah, no worries. I'm here to correct people, I guess. Uh, anyway, we're heading to bar. Uh, we're going to be about fifth in line here, uh, so we're going to be chilling here for a hot minute. This is interesting, too, because we joined our ST at bar, but didn't join close enough to get any flare progress. And oh my god, we take a, we take a bug behind the shark. Uh, Surely we must have been at least somewhat visible for that. Well, you have to remember in replays, the shark is just a tiny bit off, so we were probably technically visible for a frame or two there, but I think it was probably mostly clean. The highlight says that we're probably credited, but I don't think it's anything more than that. Yeah, that is just very impressive awareness from Nebula, just, just knowing that that was available with the shark position. Uh, very impressed by that play. I mean, uh, yeah, it seems like CRIMS is at least a little bit on top of it, so who knows how good our chances actually are. And yeah, we immediately take the contact. Um, not a bad contact either, only uh, three lowlights. The SDA was out, and the safety office on Irish for some reason or another. Uh, if that is uh, noticed by CRIMS, then there is... That's a delegate uh, across the combo, by the way. Uh, if that is really? noticed, then that has to be in that conversation for real, especially with this delegate. Some uh, really kind of innovative, innovative stuff from Nebula. I haven't really seen, I haven't really seen the shark used in that way to do a delegate from the other side of the conversation, move back to the original spot so that it can't be traced back to us. That is, yeah, Nebula is showing he knows the shark and is using it, unlike anyone I've really seen in recent time. I'm just gonna say that I've done that like two or three times, um, like a bragging person. Anyway, <laughs> Perlin's taken, but I don't know if that's actually been noticed from CRAMs, considering there's no low lights that have come off or anything like that. Especially considering a low light took it, no one who hasn't been a low light has been to bar in like a full minute at this point. So, yeah, that is awareness. quite interesting. Like knowing CRAMs and like how he snipes, I. I have to I have to assume he does know, but just I, I think he's just so far brain. behind that he, yeah, he's just looking for something to let him off the hook here. And Nebula just kept his foot on the gas, and uh, wow, very very big spy win for Nebula early on here. Yeah, yeah, looking on the replay, wow, completely invisible for that delegate. <laughs> Really nice stuff. And yeah, I, I do believe that you have used that tech before, even though I, I haven't seen it. I, uh, I I trust that you could make this play as well. Um, but yeah, yeah, really, just really good spy play for Nebula. It just pays off early on in the set. And uh, let's see if um, CRAMs can answer back. And it looks like we are on just the venue to do so. So pub 307, uh, CRAMs will be spying as Disney in three, two, one, playing it. We do say it's a great way to get back on, but also this is Nebula, a pathing sniper on Pub, which I think is one of the bigger like pathing venues to mess up on. So I think that this is just gonna. We're still in AI control, by the way. Well, maybe Sweet. he's uh maybe he agrees with you and is trying to earn a pathing low late. So um. What do you think that uh, are some of the pathing pitfalls that a less experienced player might fall into on pub? You you are asking the wrong person, but basically just anything with going within five feet of Damon is a death sentence against a pathing sniper. I've learned. Uh, don't ask with, me how to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff with um, pathing on Damon correctly, pathing in and out of that uh, narrow doorway correctly and then pathing to the statues correctly. I think there's a number of uh, things you can watch that are cool. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I, I was honestly just asking out of curiosity because I never really looked at this as a big pathing venue. But um, yeah, when you're playing some of these top guys, yeah, they can 
turn and even the red. smallest thing and did like a huge advantage as and i think c rams kind of agrees because he's it, from what it appears he's not trying to win he's playing more of a frame type style um so let's see if that can uh, pay off but uh man nebula is just just really aggressive here with the low lights banana bread I will point out, until that second BB, that banana bread was real for absolutely nobody. So that was a known fake, but this one has only three real, one of which was safetyed off just a few seconds prior. Yeah, and interestingly enough, even though we've done basically nothing, we are a highlight. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, yeah, I, I don't know. This, this must be kind of terrifying to play against at the moment. Um, I'm sure C-Rams is just really hoping that one of these other reels will do something that resembles a mission. Um, and yeah, we are heading into the bar, which, uh, as mentioned, might get a shot. Nope, just uh, heading for the statue. So we actually can finish at this one statue alone. Uh, so single inspect is a mission. Swap is another. Let's uh, see if C-Rams goes for it. Ooh, and just the inspect is enough. Yeah, Nebula is on top of it. Yeah, it did go for the swap, but couldn't even get enough time to... Technically, the shot was taken almost a full second before the swap even triggered. That bullet time takes a lot of t of time. I can say worse. Yeah, so pretty impressive once again for Nebula, just, just being able to shoot on the two missions. Um, so yeah, let's see. Um, let's go ahead and get into the next round and see what Nebula can do on the spy side of Pub. Uh, spying as Irish in three... Two, one, playing it. Obviously, Nebula is feeling pretty confident up 3 0, as everyone would be if they're up 3 0. So yeah, it's. I'm not... willing to see a little bit of looseness here. Yeah, I, I will say I've had 3 0 starts that I don't feel confident in, but just the way that he's got into these three points just feels so, like, dominating so far. Um, like, I mean, his sniping is just absolutely on point, and that spy game is one of the better ones I've seen in quite some time. So, uh, yeah, I expect Nebula to just kind of keep the pressure on, because generally with an opponent like this, you really don't want it, you don't want it to be close, you, you don't want to let him back in. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm expecting more of the same coming up. Yeah. Honestly, at this point, like, as Nebula, I might even consider especially in pub 3 of 7, just not doing anything, because I'm sure C-Rams is very nervous and is willing to take a shot for something uh, risky. Uh, Nebula might agree, considering he hasn't done anything, but... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I... In my mind, like, I, I think of C-Rams as a really good camping sniper. Like, I, I think if you time out, he is good enough to generally hold that shot. Um... Yeah, I feel like maybe Nebula might want to at least do a little bit of influence, try to influence a frame a little bit, but of course you need you need help from the AIs in, in cases like that. But yeah, one minute yeah. in and we only have the half flirt. Uh, I mean, certainly this is within finishing range, but um, it's, it's going to be a little bit, a little close. Yeah, we are delegating to Rocker, who we are now getting his second flirt with, but I don't think that that's going to be enough to finish uh, Perline. But it is enough to finish flirt. Uh, and Perline expires, so I was completely right, as per usual. Um, we still need two missions if we want to finish, and we only got 40 seconds. Yeah, our double agent's at the statues, but um, I think this is enough time for him to settle back in a conversation. It looks like, yeah, he's heading for that, but Nebula is not following. Uh, taking this print instead, so... Yeah, it looks like maybe not going to finish. There there are some avenues to go for a finish here, but uh, with a drink in hand, 15 seconds left. Not looking great. Okay, we, we do get a bug. Doesn't take the first time. Uh, DA is not in conversation. Yeah, and C-Rams is on top of the bug. I will point out, that is the very cool occurrence of a drink bug happening. Um, it was obviously very visible and on screen, and it wasn't going to finish anyway, but still cool. Yeah, definitely, it always a, is. definitely a rare moment, so you have to appreciate them when it happens. Um, and after that, it looks like we're going to move on to C-Rams double, so if there was ever a time for C-Rams to close the gap, this would be a good time to start. So 
Siram is going to be spying first on Courtyard as Salmon in 3, 2, 1, playing it. Now this is where I think Siram's has a good chance to bring it back. Because it's not, as far as I'm aware, the biggest pathing venue. And 3 of 7, obviously it's very easy for people to finish in specs. Uh, very easy for people to finish flirt or just credit it. And obviously contact's always easy. So I'm definitely expecting potentially a save shot somewhere in this. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, just holding that, you know, sniper on pub, that's kind of a good chance to stop the bleeding. And to get back in the game, we really just need one sweep. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is as good a chance as any to do it. So Sari and um, Kane immediately got that highlight for uh, statues. And we uh, joined them shortly after. So actually, oh, we are swapping. And I believe that we're swapping for Sari, who did get two inspects. And uh, look at this. We're doing a third cycle, but... Nebula was on the other side when it happened, but um, also a little bit of an animation break when we put it back down. I don't think it, I don't think Nebula missed that, but um, the fact that he's not shooting means, uh, yeah, maybe he just did not see it. Yeah, hair is now swapping, and it's seen. I do like the play, always trying to give something for the sniper to be paying attention about, but. Uh, Nebula is obviously a very good sniper and sees that. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking just that animation break must have been seen, and maybe the shot just he was just waiting for him to stop moving, just based off the way it was. Oh no, I think he also saw the uh, swap as well. So <laughs> I guess that's uh, more than enough confirmation needed for Nebula. I think he was probably dead in the water anyway, but Nebula probably thought he wasn't finished in any way and wanted to make sure. No. All right. So moving on. But to it's hard to tell. Absolutely. So moving on, it uh, looks like Nebula will be spying as general in 3, 2, 1, playing it. General, as we all know, one of the best spies, uh, does a fast time ad, which I wasn't going to say is one of their uh, better reasons for being a good spy, but it's relevant. Um, also finishing in specs within the first 30 seconds, so I think this is a pretty, uh, solid start. Uh, yeah, this is actually a huge start. Um, some of the people who, uh, kind of look into, like, statistics on certain maps have pointed out that uh, if you can get a time, time add off in, on Courtyard, like, especially I think on this 307 variant, your, your winning, per your winning percentage basically shoots up drastically. Um, so it's huge that Nebula got away with it, and, like, I think we didn't even get a highlight. I think the highlight was for going to the statues, so, yeah, we're on a really good pace. Um, like, a lot of AIs are going to go to statues within that extra time period, so, yeah, really, really good start so far. Along with that, even if you catch the time at within the first few seconds, first of all, they're at statues, which is basically the furthest point you can be from any of the time at spots. And second of all, who would time add and then immediately inspect? Obviously, no spy would do that. That's crazy. So I think it's just a really solid like move there to just get some progress immediately. And I think we're almost certainly going to win unless we do something pretty weird and Serums catches it. Yeah, we're even finishing flirt cross conversation. So like, if Serums was doing any flirt pairing on this venue, that's that's kind of out the window now too. Um, all we have to do is just find a contact and just try not to make it look too suspicious. And yeah, that's going to be another uh, another win in the bag for Nebula. I think Siram's only chance of really getting back into this is if he could somehow recall, like if he if he spotted the time at it in any way, can somehow trace that back to us. But um, it's not feeling like that's going to be the case. Uh, it goes for a fake contact as well. So um, yeah, that's a uh, yeah. If Siram's wasn't thrown off already, that's definitely going to add to it. Yeah, I absolutely love the fake contact. We're just hoping that Smallman specifically is in the SDA, and they're not. Along with that, if we get a print, then even though we have inspects and prints, it still looks like we're not finished because we were out for the banana bread. I think it's a very good move. I think that uh, even if we do get a contact later, it's going to look more like a panic-inducing contact. So I think we're pretty much still in the clear. Yeah, and it looks like our plans do actually involve the print and not the contact. That's uh, 
a very, very sneaky finish from Nebula. Um, I think he was maybe hoping that uh, that Teal was going to force out the Amba, which looks like it isn't going to happen. Um, oh, okay, so Amba just leaves on his own accord. So, uh, yeah, I'd uh, be really surprised if Nebula doesn't finish right here on this print. Oh, Nebula is taking it, and that's a... Wow, all right. A little Amazing bit of shot from CRAM. Yeah, a little bit of Caster's Curse on that one. I um, Like, as a sniper, I don't think I could ever shoot someone who was out for contact in a situation like that. Um, yeah, that was just kind of a combination of brilliant spy play plus, plus really good camping from the sniper. Uh, Siriam's just had the perfect count on that and, um, yeah, found the shot. I think it shows just really good Absolutely. situational awareness from Siriam's in that he had so many statue highlights. And if if he hadn't lost yet, <laughs> you know, um, you just gotta think maybe it's gonna do something yeah, that's, sneaky. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a fair point. I mean, if the game didn't end on the contact, then it's like, well, okay, something doesn't quite add up here. And he, yeah, he got to the answer. So, yeah, C Rams is still in this. Kind of looked like Nebula was about to pull away. Let's see if uh, C Rams can narrow the gap a little bit more, spying as Rocker in three, two, one, playing it. Ram's yet again doing AI control. I'm assuming is doing some sort of trying to get some pathing ability in the first few seconds here, which I don't hate, but I think that's more of a thing that's going to get you low light against someone like Martini as opposed to someone against Nebula. Um, I still yeah, don't hate it. I think it's a good sync for to spend a few seconds to try to get that low light, but still, we're going to get 34% flirt though. Yeah, it's one of those things, like, I think you need a certain level of commitment, because, like, we did get some really great bounces, and I think um, players would low light for those bounces if they were later in the game, but during Time of Chaos, you, uh, it's generally not the right time to take low lights, you know, since players can, you know, be on AI control without losing too much time. Um, but yeah, that being said, uh, CRAM's, you know, taking a pretty relaxed approach this time we like last time around we went to statues pretty early and it didn't pay off so uh, I think C Rams might be doing kind of the more typical uh, delayed rush this time around yeah in, in like these three of sevens there's absolutely nothing wrong with just sitting next to your ST and talking for a minute or two because like if you're moving around a lot that's gonna get you noticed I think it's better to just sit in one place and then go to statues or then go uh, Perline because then even though you are noticed doing that, it's like you weren't moving around earlier, so why would you be the spy? So it's a very solid gameplay. Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like kind of one of the big advantages of Courtyard in this matchup is uh, Nebula is not getting the usual lowlights that he was able to take on previous venues. So, um, like, normally, you know, the disadvantage to waiting around is. You know, he's going to take a ton of lowlights, party's going to get very narrowed down, and we're going to be a suspect anyways. But um, yeah, this time around, looks like that's not something CRAMS has to worry about. So yeah, finish up Seduce and join right in next to the Ambassador. So uh, let's see what CRAMS has in mind here. Did get highlight on the way here. I don't know if that's pathing. I don't know if it's just behavioral. It's pathing. But, uh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Rash. I'll take your word for it. Um... DA did leave, and now we're at 22 seconds left, and I don't think we're going to be able to finish. Yeah, so we uh, take we're this uh, wrong harm bug, bug on the way out, and yet, yeah, Nebula is on top of it. Um, I think our original plans there involved a contact, but the DA just bailed at the worst possible time and uh, didn't really have a strong backup plan. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, we didn't really get a CC Rams plans come to fruition on a courtyard, but let's go ahead and move on to the next venue and see how that goes. Or, I'm sorry, do we still have one more round? Yes, we, we do. One more. Uh, <laughs> Nebula. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, a little premature on that. So, um, looks like Nebula will be spying as sorry in three, two, one, playing it. Sorry is slow, but this is courtyard. There's not a lot of walking you're gonna have to do. Unless you walk back and forth in the same general area for the first 10 seconds. But it's not really a detriment usually on Courtyard as opposed to something like Gallery. Uh, so sorry is absolutely a monster spy choice on this venue. 
Yeah, Sari definitely seems to be a favorite among the uh, really strong players. Like, even despite her slow speed, she still has a really high pick rate, so... Yeah, on, on a venue like this where, you know, speed isn't really that big of a disadvantage, just, yeah, she just ends up being a really good all-around spy. Um, and yeah, it seems like Nebula's kind of taking a similar route that C-Rims took, just the big difference being we're not in with her. Red. ST and oh we take a fake contact which was almost amazing except for the fact that we have an SDA in our conversation so we get credit anyways. I mean I will say even though there was highlights for the real contact I think so it's known only one person was out so it even still I think that's fine along with that if there's a contact later then it's gonna look more like oh the second one's real because everyone thinks the second one's real uh, and it will be but First one is also real in big old quotation marks, so I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, I, I do love the strategy though of taking the fake contact in a really small conversation, just hoping that that big conversation is going to get real credit and handle it. So it's it's a little sad to not see it pay off in this case, and we we actually get real credit for the second time, even though we still have no missions to our name. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Two lowlights who are out were not taken, so still not terrible. I like this plan from Nebula of doing what I said when we were talking about pub, of just taking your foot off the gas, hoping for a shot. One will probably come because it's a three of seven. Uh, we're going to time at here. Uh, we'll see if it's noticed, but I think that we're two time ads. Sorry. Uh, and I think that's going to help try to induce a shot because I don't think at this point we're finishing. Uh, as I say, we're going into statues, so I guess maybe we are. Ooh, a lot of uh, a lot of fast <laughs> camera flicks here from CRAM. So clearly, the time ad was noticed. And I think the part that kind of worries CRAMs is, you know, we had all these suspects, and like probably none of them can really be credited for the time ad. So uh, yeah, I think CRAMs is just rightfully very confused right now. And uh, yeah, because of those time ads, Nebula can actually like go for a finish here. I think originally, yeah, he was planning to time out and hope hope that Serum Civ shots, but it looks like we kind of have a complete, completely different backup plan now. Another fake PB. This time we're not credited for Banana Bread, but at this point it doesn't really matter that much. Um, another Banana one. Bread. Nobody knew was getting contacts. Yeah, so I don't know serious, what that one's for, but... Some serious just mind games from Nebula. I think Nebula's trying to play with his nerves a little bit. And it might be working. Um, however, I do think... I, I don't know. I, I don't know if we're getting shot for finishing here. It looks, looks like it's just really down to just us and... and yeah, um, us, Irish, and Queen with the highlights. Yeah, there's a yes. good shot here that... We're going to get shot if we move over to the contact with uh, Tex, but even then, I'm not sure how likely it is that there's going to be... I mean, there will be overtime, so if we do it too obviously, then absolutely there's going to be a shot, but... I don't know. We're being stared down how... hard for bug, but the thing is, like, how do you shoot for contact when we've already been in for multiple contacts? Like, unless he just knows we haven't been in with this specific SDA. Oh, and we take a purloid after all of that. Nebula just kind of throwing the curveball out of left field. And uh, does Toby yeah. not have anyone to offer right now? He offers it back to us. Like, of course we, we don't want to take. specifically requested. Okay, and yeah, that fade was stared down really hard. Um, let's see if CRAMS has the awareness to just keep staring down for the next take. Uh, I think Nebula is hoping that Irish, who is sitting next to us, would be offered immediately, but Irish went for a briefcase. So it's unclear exactly what's going on. Queen is picking up statues as this is happening, so if they don't recognize that Bliss is gone, that's going to get a shot. No, all right, fair enough. Shot from Serums. Yeah, nice shot. I think honestly, once once it ended up being a low light that took the list, I think it can only really be us. Um, and that's why, I, like, I, I'm kind of impressed by Serums, like just having the patience. Like, even though, like, you know, we, we were getting the fast beeps, he knew it was, uh, <laughs> like, he knew it was close to mission one countdown ending. But um, yeah, just having the patience to wait to check the tray properly, and then just think back, like, okay, who who was the last to reject and um. 
yeah, finds the right shot. That was um, a really nice attempt from from Nebula. But uh, yeah, C Ram's just uh, staying calm and you know doing what he needed to do to find the shot in that situation. I think Nebula basically tested Serum's nerves, and Serum's basically said, yeah, these are my nerves. I'm going to shoot you now. And yep. succeeded. So good job, Serum. Yep, the nerves of someone who went to like 20x overtime held strong, I guess, as <laughs> as is expected. So um, with that, let's it's move fair. on. Move on to Modern. It uh, looks like Serum's is spying as Plane Twin in 3, 2, 1, playing it. And, Can't uh, get a bug here immediately, but I think that's ill advised, and Serum agrees. <laughs> yeah, like the, a lot of situations like that happen where you spawn right by the Amba and you think, like, oh, bug, right? But like all this weird bouncing kind of happens early in the game that usually ends up making it a lot worse of an idea than it really is. Um, yeah, so Serum starts off early green flirt. Pretty nice progress. Uh, the thing that worries me, this kind of feels like another. I don't know if I want to call it a pathing venue, but. A venue where, you know, a pathing sniper can have kind of a distinct advantage, so uh Yeah, it might might be a tough one to find a spy win here for C Rams. Yeah, this is uh absolutely not a Oh well, my point was this is not like the big big pathing venue, but there's enough things here that a pathing sniper can etch on to. Um I mean all venues a pathing sniper can do something or other. Uh, and this might not be the most well-known, but it's not like Nebula is at a disadvantage because it's not a pathing venue. Nebula can obviously camp and other things as well. So, Speaking of pathing, C-Rams took a very AI-looking path to that green bookcase, so it uh, looks like he has at least done his homework on, you know, what kind of paths can be taken, and uh, pulls a book out, so... Very uh, interesting choice. Um, actually, yeah, pretty good pathing, staying close to that window. Um, yeah, but yeah, interesting choice. I wonder what he's planning to do with this book, because I don't think, you know, against a good sniper like this, you can really... I don't think you can get away with doing a wrong a direct transfer without choosing it. Um, so I wonder if we're going to do, like, a sneaky uh, animation transfer somewhere along the lines. Yeah, n haven't really seen... Well, to be fair, the last six games, we haven't had a bookcase, but we haven't really seen any animation transfers yet, so I'm very uh, inclined to see something like that happen. We're going in with the DA, and the DA doesn't want us, uh, which is uh, probably uh, some sort of analogy for something, uh, but I'm too tired to think of one. Uh, so we're just sitting in an empty conversation with a bunch of people who mean nothing. Yeah, a little unfortunate, just because I know that CRAM's like, he does his missions in a very deliberate order, so he was probably very much planning to get a contact there. And yeah, he's still kind of staring down that double agent, hopefully, hoping that they settle on a conversation. So now that it's clear that that's off the table, um, we are in fact just going straight for the direct transfer. So I guess here is the moment of truth. Yeah, it's very easy for, uh, especially when you're the twins, uh, to go to a separate bookshelf and then you're like, oh, is that the same twin as the person who was at the bookshelf before? So uh, I think that's the twin strength. So good thing uh, CMs has taken advantage of that. Um, yeah, that's We're still going to need a whole bunch more missions, though, and we have a minute left. So got to start moving. Yeah, I hadn't even really concerned or I hadn't, hadn't considered the twin doubt being part of that. Like, the thing is, is, like, we were stared down so hard, and no, no, our ST bails on us just right as we're getting this flirt. Um, yeah, not something you really want to happen when you've already got a direct transfer in your pocket. Like, something like that is, you know, a rare opportunity against Nebula, and you, you want to, you at least want to get to Mission 1 Countdown here, so hopefully our ST calms down a little bit. Uh, same with the double agent, and uh, it looks like Perloin is probably going to be that fourth mission. This is the most egregious party luck on an otherwise amazing game I've seen in a while. Teal is going to leave, and I don't think they're going to come back. We're definitely delegating. We've already flirted. The uh, question is, what is the fourth mission if it's not contact? Uh, looks no, like never mind. Teal contact. is... Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was looks... going to say, Teal is in conversation, but we're on the floor, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, and that kind of has you wondering. Like, I know... Um, I mean, Nebula is clearly just good at spotting purloins um 
Yeah, but I wonder if that direct transfer like just got it got away, and, and like I wonder, like I wonder if that like flew under the radar, and if CRAMs just, I don't know, maybe just did some preparation and just knew that maybe that was a blind spot. But uh, I guess we will uh, have to just go ahead and move on to the next round. Um, looks like Nebula will be spying this time as Salmon. In three, two, one, playing it. Oh, okay. We're going to the corner of red book. At least I'm assuming this is going directly to blue, and I am correct. Um, Salmon, of course, can get away with stuff like that because Salmon, of course, blends in with the background very nicely. Um, so it's probably gotten uh, another clean microfilm off, uh, which is an amazing start from Nebula. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the strategy I'm more used to is kind of going for a cheese, like maybe during... During like the early chaos time when the sniper just has way too much to focus on to, to see things like that and yeah like Nebula just blends in on this venue so well like I almost wonder if that kind of raises like like more like bigger alarm bells when you see the spy on this venue <laughs> just because of the things he can get away with um, yeah that being said you know I'm I'm kind of surprised in CRAM's preparation that wasn't maybe one of the things he looks for because I feel like uh, I don't know. Like I don't know if if I'm thinking of Nebula. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of Sauerkraut, but it just feels like the kind of play that that he would go for. Oh yeah, absolutely. That is uh, most, you know, Netherlands move you can make uh, <laughs> of just doing some some sort of weird play with a bookcase in the back, um, and it works. So I'm I can't uh, cramp the style. So yeah. we're going to notably a fingerprintable statue, which is uh, quite nice, uh, leaving a lot of avenues to finish in case something weird with the DA happens again, because it's already happened once. Yeah, that just uh, kind of shows maybe a little bit of a stylistic difference. So, um, like, it kind of felt like um, C-Rams had a pretty specific plan he was going for, but uh, I think Nebula is just kind of trying to leave it open, just get some partial progress here and there, and... Um, you know, just take, just kind of go with what the party gives them. So, the like, already, already off to a really great start. And, oh, goes for a BB split. That's, um, yeah, definitely a bit of a high-risk, high-reward strategy. I don't even think that is necessarily a, oh, I'm going to get low lit for this. It's just wanted to get that briefcase to finish Prince, and now Nebula only needs to finish Flirt, and that's game. And I don't think uh, Serums has any idea that Nebula, as Salmon, is basically already finished just needs to sign the paperwork um yeah that is a pretty fair point i think maybe just not wasting any time getting that print and honestly getting the print in the aftermath of a contact is probably going to be an undetected print on top of that um and yeah i think a flirt finish is probably the best that we can really hope for here if we go back to the statues we'd probably just die just knowing how good of a camper serums is but uh shooting for flirt is pretty hard if you haven't got you know especially if you don't have the transfer so um yeah i think nebula is just kind of doing some basic ai ai looking stuff and is ultimately going to go back and start finish yeah i cannot imagine a shot coming off for returning to a uh conversation three times and then sd immediately bails it looks like we're having yet another instance of uh spy does a great game and party just decides uh no <laughs> yep, these are the uh, the fun things that can happen on a big venue like Modern. Um, yeah, sometimes you're doing everything perfectly, and then your ST is just like, no thanks. Um, yeah, so Nebula it doing also proper... notably goes to green while we have a blue book in hand when we already have microfilm. Which yeah, we're gonna so... get credited with if we go flirt. So, so here's like the only Absolutely. way that we might have lost this is that we have to chase so so much um so that's uh yeah if crams wanted to get back into this that that's really that's really his way back in is like okay you've been chasing you have some other progress but it looks like uh, we just got away with this one maybe he'll also white flirts and then cancels uh to get a green flirt leave twice oh just the once so good for that uh, but that's a win for nebula yet again yeah, and just like that, uh, Nebula two wins ahead. I'm sorry, two venues ahead. So a, a whole uh, four games ahead, and um, yeah, just looking for uh, two more for the victory. So 
go ahead and move on to the next round. Looks like we are moving into library. So this, uh, actually, I'm uh, pretty excited to see what both of these players have in mind on this one. Lots of, lots of potential for big spy plays, and looks like CRAMs is going to be starting things off as Seek in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, obviously library is going to be hard to get spy wins on, but for that reason. You have to go balls to the walls, and I think Serums especially needs to go balls to the walls for this. Um, although, alternatively, if they lose this game and win every other game, then we get to see Serums do more overtime. And what more fun is that? So, Yeah, so it looks like uh, the Ambassador was nice enough to leave a briefcase right by us, but a Twin decides that he's going to take that away. Um, C Rams decides he's gonna go ahead and get some statue progress anyways, which probably a good decision on five of eight, like you really gotta stay active, so yeah, pretty wise choice to just go ahead and just get these in hand. Yeah, almost certainly you're gonna finish in specs anyway, because it's just such a good mission when you're already doing uh five, so definitely don't hate getting some progress on that early. Uh we do need to get other missions to get some progress, but we're still early in the game, so it's not a huge deal. Yeah, yeah, the problem is, is, you know, you gotta get at least that one hard tell in, so... It hasn't quite been determined what that's gonna be yet. I'm still just kind of doing soft tells here, getting that additional flare progress. Um, yeah, just kind of looking around at the party, not too much going on, not too much to work with here. Um, yeah, probably gonna have to make some sort of play. Like, I think if there was maybe ever a good a good time to uh, time add, this might be a, a time to do it when not too much else is going on. Oh, and actually, uh, we are just gonna. Oh yeah, we're just gonna uh, green pearl line right there, which I don't yeah. hate. We're already some progress in, uh, and we're behind pillar, which is always a good time to do that. Yeah, I think. C Rams maybe not too happy that that only chained to the next person. So um, if Nebula was tracking this well, this party should get narrowed down quite a bit. Yeah, low lights coming out, but it's mostly just people who are on the right side of the party. So I don't think the list was on uh, too uh, well. But we were like directly next to the taker. So and there's a highlight. So there you go. We are indeed a potentially very big suspect. Yeah, and the funny thing is, I was watching a little bit from Nebula's perspective, and he was kind of focusing on both of the spies who are standing behind pillars. I feel like those are kind of some notorious spy spots, because um, can maybe get away with a little bit of, a little bit extra in those locations. But uh, we, of course, pick up the highlights since we were, we were in the circle where the, the pearl line happened. Um, and yeah, just uh, joining in with the DA. Um, yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like our options are going to be... Oh, yeah, we we go for the reverse try-by bug, and it doesn't take. So, yeah, Serum's not happy with that one. I think I think he was purposely setting up for that reverse try-by. Yeah, that just wasn't probably going to take unless it happened... The Amba happened to be going directly to this, like, front-middle uh, window pad. Um, but I don't hate the attempt, at the very least. We do need to get some progress, after all. Uh, we yeah, only have a minute and, uh, and a half left in one mission. Speaking of which, we we join in with the DA who immediately bails. Um, I, I really hate this party like four C Rams. Although I think at this point you have to improvise. Like maybe before the timer hits one, just go ahead and get that time add in. Because yeah, I just I just don't feel like we have enough time to finish up these missions. Do you want to point out this is like the third game in the set where Nebula has indeed highlighted the real DA. Banana bread. Uh, we're also just shot, which is fair. I think we were probably weren't winning that anyway. We yeah, I think so we were. We um, big suspect, but... Yeah, I think we were a bigger suspect than Nebula let on for that purloin. And uh, yeah, just like that, um, securing eight points, which I think is guaranteeing at least a tie. So um, yeah, Nebula about to be in a situation where he can, uh, spying for the win, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so eight to three. So? Yep, so it looks like Nebula will be spying as Disney in three, two, one, playing it. Oh, I'm all for the reverse sweep here, uh, especially considering it's a 
a good bug. Um, I didn't actually see it, but I, we aren't shot for it, so it's at least not bad. It was, uh, uh, it was definitely okay, mind. very don't, opportunistic. Don't listen to me. Yeah, it was it was a bit. It was one of those windmill bugs where you kind of get bumped and unfortunately uh, show your you kind of wave at the sniper, so to speak. A little bit of traffic that might yeah. have screwed it, but I think C Rams was pretty on top of that. Yeah, I was looking from the spy side and I was like, "Well, we aren't dead in the first two seconds, so that must be behind pillar." I was wrong. The ghost. <laughs> All right, it looks like we're uh, moving on to Tayen, and C Rams is the first to hit the emergency small man button in three, two, one, playing it. Yeah, C Rams, I mean, obviously has to win the next four games, and then at least one of the next two after that. So, obviously, he's going to have to do something like play small man on Tayen. Um,. Also, immediately going to inspects, I think I quite like, just because what sort of smallman on Tayen would be at inspects right away? That's crazy. Yeah, and here's so. the way I'm looking at it. I think if you're C Rams, I mean, I'm sorry, if you're playing C Rams, smallman is going to get tunneled no matter what. So if you're already going to be a top suspect, you might as well get the credit to go along with it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, why, why not? Why not go ahead and pick up the early inspects? Looks like we might be considered finishing. No, joining in with a double agent instead. Yeah, this is not a bad contact. Only well, two people now are sorry, three people now are out. Uh, it's still not absolutely terrible, so I don't hate it. Uh, but it's still a little bit early to be knocking out uh, so many suspects. Also, uh, yet again, the DA uh, leaves but rejoins right away because, I mean, at this point, like, that's just throwing some salt in the wound. Um, we should have, like, a counter of how many times DA's left because I think it's, like, at least four or five at this point. Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to say that I know what CRIMS is thinking, but I feel like he's probably just trying to get these soft tells out of the way so that he can just do those last two missions and dance behind the conversations. It's, it's something he's done many times before. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen him do it, I think, on Gallery and Tayen before. Um, I think he's done it successfully. So he just really needs to get himself in position. And right now, yeah, just picking up that flirt progress, step one. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess he probably is planning to finish up the inspects, but that, might, that alone might actually just get him shot if, if Nebula's a little bit jumpy on the sniper. Oh, I, I mean, yeah, almost certainly. Like, if you're a sniper and you see Smallman uh, finishing inspects on Tayan, like, nine times out of ten you shoot that. Are we ignoring Toby? Yeah, Toby was ignored. Oh, he gave up. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Nebula yeah. is probably one of the people who would see that, especially when you're Smallman on Tayan. They're going to be noticing Toby. So that could be bad. But yeah, and I mean, I just no from a behavioral standpoint, we've we've rejected three times, and a lot of snipers will. I mean, I don't know if they'll shoot you for it, but they will hate you for doing that. <laughs> like, if you weren't being focused already, you, you certainly are now. Um, but I, don't know uh, what Nebula... about. I never pay attention to that. <laughs> never ever. But, but Nebula is actually pretty relaxed here, not not trying to force anything. So, um, C Ram still has his chance to uh, to make a play here. It, it's really going to come down to if we can walk away from this statue alive. Yeah, I'm assuming we're swapping here and then finishing inspects in contact and then uh, hiding behind us. No, we're not even swapping. We're going to have to figure out a way to finish without that. And Yep, Nebula takes the trap, and that's the game. Yep, Nebula just happened to be ready for it. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, it was, uh, it was a good try from C -Rams. I really, uh, Honestly, I really felt like the parties were not being nice to him. That being said, uh, Nebula just looked incredible today and very deserved, very deserved victory, and uh, cannot wait to see him in the finals. Uh, I mean, we do have to because we do have to look at the other person going into the finals, so we do have to at least wait for that to see Nebula in the finals. But we're, we'll get there, some point. 